Morning everybody, Razor Guys here. Uh, well, for me it's morning, and hopefully I'm caffeinated enough that I can keep up with you on this Rudy review. Today we're doing one of my favorites, the Playmates Vorchuk class Klingon Attack Cruiser. Uh, definitely one of Playmates' better ships. Matter of fact, I would actually say, if I mentioned before in one of my previous reviews, uh, with Playmates it was generally hit or miss. This was definitely a hit. I would actually say this is probably Playmates' best effort. I would, I would go on record as saying that. I think the only one that really comes close is the um, Defiant that they released later on, and the original Enterprise. Lo and behold, here we have the Klingon Attack Cruiser. Is that not the most detailed starship that Playmates ever did? I mean, the amount of detail on this is astounding. I've actually seen some good pictures of the studio model, and this comes very, very close. I was actually, even for a while there, was convinced that the color had to be too light, but under the proper lighting conditions, the light is correct. I mean, not the light, the uh, color is correct. I'm hoping this doesn't sound like a biker trash review. He, um, just about ready to go to bed while I was up all night. And you never notice in his reviews, he always tends to do them right before he goes to bed. So, uh, it's a certain authentic, authentic charm to it, but it's kind of a strange little thing for him. Anyway, so here we have the Klingon Attack Cruiser. As I said before, Playmates really did a good job on this idea. They must have it sent this out to a couple other art houses or something to do the sculpting because the sculpting is dead on. There really isn't much uh, that's different from the studio model. This, as a matter of fact, there was even a rumor that they used one of these in the D Space Nine episode where the warrior it was used for one of the background shots, and it, it really holds up. And can I just add, this is probably in terms of not only in terms of detail, but in craftsmanship, this is probably one of Playmates' better efforts. This comes as one piece. The only thing that really comes off is the battery pack. Right there. Uh, the nacelles don't come off. They're on there. They kind of uh, wiggle a little bit, but that's about it. And you know, this is all one piece. Nothing comes off. This is actually the second one I own. I bought, I kind of got a new version after the one I got for Christmas in 1983. Uh, it's it's still here. It's still it's just in, in storage. I just don't feel like getting it out right now. It's still here, and it's still in working condition. There's nothing wrong with it. It's just kind of gotten, um, it's run down a little over the years. The, uh, the, the detailing, the, little, the uh, paint started to fade on some of the some of the things here in the, uh, in the cells. I've actually taken it apart and was trying to secure the cells in bed. They, they wiggle a little bit. That kind of bother me. But beyond that, they're, they're in there pretty solid. They're, they're held in by screws, so they're not going to come out on any, or anything. I've opened one of these up before. Uh, like I said, the detail is amazing. Um, this particular version, this particular ship was designed by Rick Sternbach, I think I'm pronouncing that correctly, the, one of the senior illustrators on Star Trek The Next Generation, and he basically, it didn't appear until season four of The Next Generation, they were trying to, they wanted to get a new Klingon ship for their big, uh, two-parter, I think it was Redemption, it was called. Oh, yeah, that was the, the two-parter that, uh, was coming along, and they wanted to get a new Klingon ship because they were basically reusing old shots from the motion picture, of the old standard Katinga class battlecruiser, the D7, the D7 Katinga, and the Bird of Prey that was designed for Star Trek. They didn't really have a uh, Klingon ship that they showed that they had designed for Next Gen. And this, let me hope this one came along. And Rick, I think, did a bang up job. I really liked the uh, Attack Cruiser. I'm a bigger fan of the Battle Cruiser, but that's just my own personal taste. Uh, big thing with the battle, with the Attack Cruiser that Rick apparently did, was he gave it sort of a look, uh, a combination of the old. Klingon Battle Cruiser. It has the you know the the, um, the pod up here, the nacelles come down here, and the whole front section. Definitely a Klingon ship. Uh, even has this part right here. And one thing he also did was he kind of gave it a look of a tank. It has the the model, the um, the hull detailing and the uh, armor plating of a tank. And also, uh, particularly in this front part here. It has kind of a Japanese anime uh, look. This is actually a forward destructor cannon. We actually saw this firing in Redemption, I think part one, part one of the Next Generation, which was the season, I believe, the season four, season four, yeah, season four closer, season four closer, and really cool. The destructor, it like uh, energy bolts just kind of build up in here, and they just kind of fire out, which was a really cool way of looking at it. But it was uh, inspired by some Japanese anime. I'm not all that familiar with Japanese anime, so I really can't tell you which one, but uh, Rick Sternbach is a huge fan of Japanese anime, and it kind of shows. A uh, kind of funny thing is that on the, the anime, when I saw it in the United States, G-Force, the, um, 
main ship, the Phoenix, actually kind of looks like a Klingon attack cruiser. Uh, it actually has kind of this, this this whole section right here, which, you know, obviously this is from a battle cruiser, but, you know, the, the Tinga class battle cruiser, excuse me there. Uh, but basically a very similar look, and I wonder if Rick, uh, wonder if there was a bit of a design jump there. But beyond that, really, just I can't go on enough about this. It's definitely one of Planet's better, uh, better, I mean, just when you think about this, that this, this actually came out fairly early in the run. This was in 1983 this came out. Uh, I got this, I got, well, the first one I mentioned before, in, for Christmas in 1993, for a little while they just had the uh, Enterprise D, another future review, and the Shuttlecraft, which we're skulking around. Basically, just those two for, I think that, they came out in 90, I want to say late 92, and I was walking around in Toys R Us one day with my parents, and I saw the box for this, and just how cool it looked, and it was just, um, I mean, just uh, the detail on this is good. They also released a Romulan Warbird at the same time. That's another future review that I'll be doing. And that was also good, but this is actually, I think, the better ship just because of the amount of detail on this. This it really looks great. It um, does come, obviously, with anything playmates. It comes with lighting, lighting sounds, and here the buttons, and even the buttons are really in to integrate, integrate well into the um, detailing of the ship. Unlike the um, Enterprise D and some of the later ships, they really, I don't know, Whoever designed, whoever did the sculpting on this was really pretty good. It has a phaser sound. Very cool. The uh, nacelles light up. Just the nacelles light up. Just like I said, early production ones. So nothing fancy. A disruptor sound. Very cool sound. I love that. I believe this is the cloaking device. Yep. Like the most of the Playmate ships, this is kind of loud, but we can forget that. And I'll uh, try to remember what this one was. Oh. Other disruptor sounds. It's a warship, obviously, it's going to have sounds. Let me just show you the bottom. Uh, yeah, there are screws visible, as you can see, but, they, I mean, in a, in, a, in a toy from the 90s, that's kind of forgivable, but even the detail on the bottom's pretty good. I can't get it... I, um, oh, also, uh, as I mentioned before, with some of the Playmate ships, it was always, you know, some of them were lousy with decals. The Enterprise B, as I mentioned before, was one of them. The Klingon Attack Cruiser does have decals, um, and this is one, and this is one, and right here, and right here, it's basically just a, um, duplicates of the same decals, and it's kind of, with this one, with this one, it's not too big, because it fits on that, uh, on that plate real well. This one, it kind of just, you know, it, you kind of have to, this is my really only complaint, that it, just, it you know, just kind of sticks here. And you have the grooves underneath, but I mean, you can't. There's nothing really else, nothing negative else I can say about this. I got this one on eBay. I I ripped the guy off. I, I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't know. I don't know why he settled, but I actually got this one for twenty five plus maybe about like, I say maybe five to seven dollars shipping and handling. So that poor schmuck. I'm sorry, buddy, if you're watching this, but you did get ripped off. That you could probably sell this for a bit more. I don't. I haven't been checking on eBay for prices, so I don't know what you can get for this now. I'd imagine they probably go for about fifty, sixty dollars right now. Uh, yeah, I, if you can find this on eBay, get it. I would just tell you, I don't know what Art Asylum, Art Asylum is apparently doing a claim on Battle Cruiser. I don't know how. I don't know when that's supposed to be, and I don't know if it'll be the D7 or the Katinga. That's a matter for another video. But you know, if you can get one of these, get get yourself one. It's 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 well worth any money you might might see. This is the only older Playmate ship I would recommend that you, you go looking for. Just this one, maybe maybe Voyager if, you, if you're really kind of in for it. Oh, why don't I do a size comparison on here? Uh, here it is compared to Transformers Classic Starscream. It's about 14 inches long. Uh, I mean, the attack was just 14 inches long. This side, I'm actually in the remise of this uh, not too big. So it it does. It's it's a pretty good size. It's not in scale with the Playmates Enterprise D. And uh, here it is compared to the new movie Enterprise. They're around the same length. A little the Enterprise is of course a little thinner. Yes, this will be a future review. So that's all I can really say about the Vorch uh, Class Klingon Attack Cruiser. Uh, have a good day. Hope to see more videos soon for me. Um, don't know what I'll be doing next. So. Quote Silverbolt, adios, I'll be the